Okay, everyone, good morning. Um, uh, good afternoon, I'm sorry. My name is Bruce Momjan. Uh, I'm one of the Postgres core team members and uh, employee of Enterprise DB for the past 10 years. Um, James Coleman, as uh, the uh, host mentioned, was not able to speak today, uh, so they have asked me to take his place. Fortunately, he was speaking about common table expressions, and I also happened to have a common table expression presentation. So I was the logical person, so if you did he come to listen to table expressions, I have you covered. If you came to see James Coleman, not so much. Um, this is a very interesting presentation. I think you'll find it challenging, um, a little unorthodox in some of the approaches, but uh, it, uh, it builds up very slowly, and at the end, it's very complicated. So uh, if you're kind of bored like 10 minutes in, don't worry, the rockets are gonna kick in at some point, and it's gonna kind of take off. <laughs> um, this presentation, along with 30 other presentations, are actually at my website right here. So if you'd like to download these slides, even right now, uh, those are on the website. There are recordings of me giving these many of these presentations as well. Um, I do have 90 slides. I do have 50 minutes. Uh, so this should be interesting. Um, uh, again, there is a lot of material here. Uh, but again, I don't assume you know what common table expressions are. I don't assume that. You've actually worked with them before. We start very basic and we build up and we build up. Uh, how is my volume? Is it too loud for people? Is it okay? You're good? Okay, it's not too loud. Because I am I know if I talk really loud, it, it would be too loud. So I'm trying to be kind of quiet. Um, maybe I'll, you know what I'll do? Let me lower it a little bit. Maybe that'll make it a little more normal. No, it's too loud. Is that too low? Is that good? Okay, good. So I can talk a little louder maybe in uh, uh, more of my normal voice. Um, so, Again, we don't assume a lot about common table expressions. These were added a couple years ago into Postgres, and I think you'll find them to be, uh, to answer, to solve some very interesting problems that uh, you encounter as application developers. Um, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around everything that it can be done with common table expressions. So again, I'm going to be kind of exhaustive and try and go through it step by step uh, in, in, in getting more advanced and more advanced until we get to the end. So as we only have 50 minutes and 90 slides, let's get started. Um, this is the outline of what I want to cover. First, I want to talk about some technical terms, which I think will be help to clarify what we're doing. Um, then I'll talk about the common table expression syntax, talk about what recursive common table expressions. Sounds scary, it is. Uh, then we'll go for some examples and finally writable common table expressions. Um, so again, some, um, some definitions. Um, the difference between imperative and declarative, you, you see that sometimes in academia, but not so much in practical uh, case. We think of Java, we think of Perl, we think of SQL, we think of uh, Prolog and some of the Erlang and some of the sort of fancy languages. We don't typically classify them, but effectively um, an, an imperative language is a language similar to C or Perl where you tell the computer what you want to do. Um, uh, you're, you're basically it's describing things in terms of statements that change program state. This is kind of the programming language that most of us are working in on a day-to-day -day basis. But there is another kind of language called a declarative language. These are normally higher level languages. SQL happens to be one of them. Where you don't tell the computer what to do, you tell the computer what you want. And the computer then figures out how to get you that result the most efficiently. And frankly, this is one of the reasons the SQL remains popular 40 years in, or 40 plus years in, because in a lot of ways it removes, um, it removes a burden from the application program. The application program can send the query to the server, the server figures out what indexes to use, figures out how to do the joins, a whole bunch of stuff. I have a whole bunch of presentations about that. But the idea of a declarative language is that you tell it what you want and then it figures it out. Okay. Um, here's just some examples. This is a very simple imperative languages, uh, very easy to understand. Um, declarative language, this is a little kind of weird, right? Like, how would you do this looping, saying hello, hello over and again in SQL? Well, SQL is a declarative language. There's no way to create a construct, a loop, or anything like that, okay? But the bottom line is there are some cases where, in fact, you want to be imperative, even in SQL. 
And common table expressions, in my mind, allow you to do that. It allows you to take yourself out of sort of the declarative box and tell the system, I want to do this specific thing, and I don't want you to like interpret it or whatever. I just want you to do that. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of examples where this is actually very valuable, particularly common table expressions allow this to happen. Okay. So um, again, there's a lot of options for imperative programming, uh, client applications, JDBC, libpq, Perl, server-side programming. We certainly have a lot of declarative um, imperative languages. Um, and common table expressions, which is another sort of imperative tool in your box. And that's why common table expressions are so interesting, because they kind of come at SQL from a completely different direction than a lot of other, um, a lot of other features. So this is the syntax for common table expressions. Um, again, it was added in 8.4, so quite a number of years ago. Uh, the syntax always starts with the word with. So if you've ever seen a query that starts with with, and you're like, well, I don't see select there. Like, what is that, right? It's, it's a common table expression. It starts with the word with. And then usually the word select is after that, although technically um, you can do some other things I'll talk about later, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving away the form there. Basically, the word with, and then some query, and then perhaps another query, and then eventually, usually, it ends up with select. That's typically the way these things go. So here's the simplest common table expression that I could think of. Um, again, we're going to start really slow. So here is that keyword with, and the first thing I have to do after that keyword is name the common table expression. And that's pretty fundamental to common table expressions. Because effectively, the reason common table expressions are uh, uh, imperative is that effectively you're creating kind of a data source on the fly. It's almost as though you're creating a temporary table. Think of it that way. Okay. So if you look here, I say with, and I call the I call the the contents of that thing source. Okay. And then inside that common table expression, what do I have? Select one. Right. Super boring, but it works. Right. And then. Once I get out of the common table expression, notice it's actually with and a name and as, and then I've got some parens, and those parens basically border that common table expression, the start and stop. And then I have outside of the common table expression a with, and then notice the use of the keyword source. In fact, source is the same. This is, I'm referencing that source, that common table expression sort of container that I created above. Okay, you can see how it's, it's kind of imperative. Um, also, if you don't believe what I'm doing here, you want to run these queries yourself, you're welcome to do that. The SQL query URL at the bottom there, right here, uh, this allows you to actually take the, if you just download that, go to that URL and just download it, you can run this in PSQL and you'll see the exact same slides. In fact, when I did this presentation, I wrote the SQL and then I ran it and then I pasted it into my editor and my, into my word processor and then made the slides. It was easier to create the SQL first and then, and then basically create a frame around it. The other obviously thing that you're noticing is that if there's something in red on the slide, that's where you want to look, obviously, right? There's a lot of text on some of these slides and the red kind of is designed to kind of focus your eyes. So here's, a, here's another version of the common table expression. Uh, the difference here is that we're actually giving the column a name. So as you notice here, uh, in, back here I didn't give it a name, so it had this really weird, like, random name that comes up. Here, because I gave the column in the com common table expression a name, the select star actually supplied the column name. Okay, so we're getting a little bigger. We're now giving name, not only a name to our common table expression, we're actually naming one of the columns. Um, you can name it this way as well. Here I didn't name the col column inside the common table expression. I named it outside the common table expression. But again, call one, call one, lines up, same thing. Okay. We can do more. Wow, whoopee do. Here we name the column call one inside the common table expression. We can name it com call, call two outside the common table expression. And then when we do the select, we call it call three. And what do you know, call three becomes. So just keep in mind there's some layering going on. If you override an earlier level, it just wipes it out. OK. Um, you can return two columns if you want. Here I'm returning two columns, one, two. I get one, two rows back. Um, I can do, um, so, so let me ask you, any questions so far? OK, great, OK. So we're. 
we're eight minutes in, we're good. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about union. Um, I have to tell you about this because it ends up being used a lot with common table expressions. Union is a way of sort of pasting two queries together. Uh, so you take one query, you union it with another query, and, and by default, if you use the union without the all clause, it gets rid of the duplicates. So union without an all gets rid of the duplicates. I think it's a really weird default, but there's some relational algebra reasons for it, which I'm not going to go into, even if I could. Um, but normally, when we're going to use union all with common union with common table expressions, we're going to use that all keyword. And you can notice it has not gotten rid of any duplicates there. Okay. So here's where we start to get a little more exciting. Uh, here I'm creating two common table expressions. Uh, one is called source. One is called source two. Column names one, two. Uh, I'm sorry. Values one, two on the first table. Two, three, four in the second table. I do a select, and now here, now I have a comma here. So here's my first common table expression, a comma, second common table expression, okay? And then down here, I'm selecting from source, then I'm doing union all, which remove, doesn't remove the duplicates, and then I'm saying, give me from source two. So I've created two data sources, and then I'm querying them separately in separate selects, which are connected by union all, okay? And I have one, two, three, four returned, okay? So again, I, again, it's it's like we're real. You know, when you take off in a plane and you're like going down the runway and you're like, we're not going fast enough to take off. I don't know how many of you feel that way, but like you're going down and you're like, we're probably going like 40 miles an hour. I don't understand. What we're going to take off, and magically you do. That's what this presentation is going to do. It starts kind of lumbering down the the the, the tarmac a little bit, but it, it it eventually takes off and it gets crazy by the end. So don't worry. Um, so let's do some common table expressions with some real tables. Uh, here's an example. I'm using a system table, uh, PG language, and I'm joining it to PG roles. So this is an entire select statement inside the red, um, and I've created a data source, which is the join of those two. And effectively, when I do the query down here, I get the same results as if I had run that. Now, is this useful? No. right? This is completely fabricated. But again, it illustrates that we can put queries that even do joins inside of these common table expressions. Um, here's where it gets a little more interesting. Again, we're, we're, we're not taking off yet, but the, the plane's starting to shake a little bit. Um, here we, we do a common table expression up here. We still call it source. It does a join, but we're actually doing two different things with the result. And this is where we're starting to actually use common table expressions in a way that's actually useful. And I've done this actually myself. I'm not sure how many of you have also done this. But the typical problem you're trying to solve here is you have a query, and you want to look at the data in two different ways, but you want to return them in the same result set. Okay? And the old way of doing that would be to run the query twice. You'd have one query here, and then, you know, just forget that. Don't do that. So here we say, with source, we run the query. We decide to return all the rows, and we union all, and we then add an additional row on the end that says, give me the minimum. So effectively, what happens here is you've got C, internal, PLP, GSQL, SQL, and then the minimum name of those is land name. And as you'll notice, there's actually no value over here because I specified null uh, on that side. Any questions? OK. So, um, we can join to these common table expressions, these sort of fake tables that we create. Here's a, a case where, again, kind of contrived, we select a certain number of values from the PG class table, we name the columns, and we then select and we join the common table expression with another table, and then we return the results. Again, probably you'd never want to do this, but you kind of get the idea. Um, Getting a little more interesting, we now have the ability to do a case statement inside of a common table expression. You're like, OK, why should I care about this? Why, why am I talking about this? Because as I said before, common table expressions are an imperative, give you imperative control of SQL. And effectively, a case statement, although you never maybe thought about this, actually acts as an if-else clause. So it gives you an SQL construct 
to do if-else processing, and I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of that as we go forward. So here's a refresher. Um, here I have uh, selecting a column, and I am actually have a second column that's manufactured. That, ma that, that column is either going to say positive, zero, or negative, depending on the value of the column. Okay. So I talked about recursive as sort of a way of creating loops in common table expressions, and this is the first time we've actually seen the recursive keyword uh, in action. Okay. So I kind of told you about union and union all, and you can kind of paste queries together. I talked about case statements. It kind of like, acts like an if-else thing. Again, I'm kind of getting into an imperative language that has an if statement and, and sort of a way of joining things together. But I didn't really talk about looping, because most languages have some kind of construct to repeatedly do something. Hopefully not repeat it forever. It never finishes. But some construct, maybe you don't want it to finish. Maybe it's a daemon that repeatedly runs things. But anyway, um, we're going to assume that you don't want to write an SQL query that just runs forever, uh, which you could do. Um, in fact, this is an example of that. Um, there is a special keyword called recursive. And if you add that recursive keyword into the common table expression, then effectively what happens is that you get, it takes the common table expression, it runs it, it returns the result, and then it goes back and it runs it again. Okay, so that's a, this is a very simplistic example. You you would never do this in production. Um, in fact, this is a, um, a kind of a case where it runs, it returns one row, and it just kind of comes down. So you say recursive, it returns a source, but there's no kind of hook here. So one row comes out, it selects from source, and one one row comes out. It's very simple. Okay. Um, this is not this is not simple. This is where it goes bad. Okay. The difference between this one and this one is that this one doesn't mention source in times inside the common table expression. This one does. And this is a construct you're going to see over and over in this presentation, and frankly, over and over in production use of common table expressions. Here we basically have the same recursive keyword, the word source, we have a select. But then we have that union all, that thing I talked about earlier. And then we have another select, which also queries the same common table expression we're generating. So this would be bad, right? This is the 10 go to 10 kind of command, or looping you know, while, while true kind of command, where it just goes on and on. So what happens is you return the one, but then the rest of the query asks for the one, and then you get the one, and it returns a one again, and then that one comes back in, and you, it returns a one again. And the only way this actually finished was I, I actually set a statement timeout so that it would terminate, uh, because it would act, this would actually never finish. So you'd never write something like this. And it's important to understand the construct, because you are going to be using this uh, kind of construct throughout the entire presentation. Okay, <clears throat> So this is basically the way it works. You start with the word recursive up top. You have some type of constant to, I would say, prime the pump. Okay, get it started. That's your first value of your loop. And then in your union all, you have some new value. So in this case, it just loops forever. The one returns the source. That source actually is queried here. The one goes back up. It comes back down. It goes back up. It comes back down. This obviously, the two and the three just never finish. So how do you fix this? Um, well, this is another example that's also very bad. It, tep it's, it, it technically would say hello over and over again, which again is not something what you want to do in production. Uh, but again, it, in fact, it would, it would print nothing because it would never finish. Okay. Um, there's one way to fix this, and that is to use union without the all. Because again, once you get a duplicate, it doesn't rerun. So the same thing with the one or hello, it doesn't matter. It, sees, it sends the hello. The second hello is already the same. Nothing new is coming out of the query. It knows not to run anymore, and it actually terminates. This is not used very much, but I just wanted to give it to you for completeness. The way you normally do it is this. Okay? If you don't understand this slide, you're going to have trouble understanding the later slides. So I'm actually going to ask for questions once I'm done this slide. The basic issue here, 
um, is that you say with recursive and you have, in this case, a counter, whatever you want to call it, um, you seed a value here of 1, whatever that is, and then you union all, and here we have a case where the 1 actually goes up to the counter, it comes down to the source, because remember we're querying from source, this 1 becomes a 2, okay? So the 1 comes out, the 1 goes up, it comes into here, the 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 goes up, 2 comes down, now 2 becomes 3, 3 goes up, 3 comes down, 3 becomes 4. You get it? Okay. However, the reason this works is that where clause. Again, highlight the text in red. What I'm saying here is that you can keep this loop going, but as soon as the counter is equal or greater than 10, we stop. Okay, and this construct you're going to see over and over again. You have a priming query that does a select to get you started. Okay, maybe it'll be a constant, maybe it'll be a value from something else, whatever. Okay, then you have a union all, and then you have another query which also references the same source as the, as, as the top, but you have some kind of limiting condition. This limiting condition prevents it from running forever. All right. Any questions about this? Yes, sir. Okay, so the word counter just happens to be a name I gave that column. Oh, if I don't name, okay, that's a great question. So if I don't name the column, yeah, so that wouldn't work because the one would come up, but there would be no name to reference it here, I think is the problem. Yeah. But that would be, uh, yeah, there would be, it would be an anonymous column and then you couldn't, you couldn't actually query it here. I guess there might be some use for that, but you really need this. You really almost need a name. I, I hadn't thought of it, but yeah, it, you can use it without a name, but I, I would say once you go recursive, you kind of got to name it. My question is really, do you have to have a name in that outer parenthesis? No, 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 no. No, you could, I think you could, oh, now that's actually a good question. Do you have to have the name up here, or could you put the name here? I think you could just, you could put the name here. Yeah, I think you, I don't think you have to have it up there. I like it up there because it's clearer, but I think you don't think you have to. Other questions? Yes, sir. Well, they are, yes, sir. Um, effectively, uh, the way SQL works, it, it, it returns the data in a non-deterministic order, right? But because they were generated in that order, that's the order we're going to turn them in. We could have added an order by down here if we want to override that. But normally, they will come out in exactly that number, order. Now, this is a contrived example. Again, typically, if you want to do this, you'd run generate series. But you get the idea. We got it. We got to start somewhere. This is a good example. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's a good point. So the question is, if that where clause, does that where clause actually running for the value 10 to come down, or is it not calling the function at all? Indeed, it is calling the function. So if you had a function with side effects in that where clause, potentially that could be run. Yeah. Now there is some, uh, sh I don't even think we short circuit and clauses, so I think it would always run that whole line, even if you had a function call in there. But again, function call with side effects would be a case where it actually would, would matter whether that where clause was run, and indeed it does. Other questions? Yes, sir. So if you had, so the question is, if you had a second source here and you reference source in the second source, which you can do, wouldn't necessarily have the seed value. In fact, what would happen was you, you can actually generate values in source and then those values would feed into source two and source two effectively would run as an independent uh, 
after source, it's after source, right? So the first one would pretty much complete before the second one would generate. Yeah, pretty much that's, I'm pretty much sure that's how, that's the way that we implemented it, yeah. Oh, you can't do two recurses in the same query. I haven't looked at that. I thought you could. I mean, technically you should be able to, but. Just an ordinary one, yeah. It would it would run source one and then it would feed it into source two, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Other questions? Yeah. 